Okay, so this question starts off uh, fine and dandy, gets a little bit scary later on. But anyway, we've got compound K, of which we've got four different R groups coming off of there. Two, four, dinitropine and hydrogen, they've given you the structure of that, and they've given you the orange precipitate there, L. Describe the use for NMR spectroscopy in medicine. Well, uh, the various body scanners um, and so on. Um, state the reagent, uh, sorry, the region of the electromagnetic spectrum used it is, of course, radio. Why is CDCL3 used as a solvent in proton NMR? It's because it won't have any uh, protons and therefore doesn't give a signal uh, because the H has been replaced by deuterium. Um, and then things get a little bit scary. So the carbon-13 NMR is shown below of L. How many different carbon environments are there present in compound L? So this is okay, you just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So there are 14 environments of carbon because I've got 14 lines. The reaction of K to form L is repeated below, that's handy. And the NMR spectrum of L is shown below. Use your answer to see in the data given to identify R1 and R2 in the structure of the compound. Okay. The main thing for this one is it looks incredibly complicated, but actually it's not too bad because they've given you all of this that you know about, the only thing you don't know is R1 and R2. So from this spectrum, what we need to do is we need to take away the peaks that we know relate to this bad boy here. So let's have a look. I have got seven hydrogen peaks. These are all going to be aromatic protons. So these are all attached to a benzene ring if you look at your data sheet. So these boys are all coming from this type of hydrogen. Like so. It's telling me I've got seven there. But if you have a look here, I'm going to have a hydrogen there, a hydrogen there, and a hydrogen there. So actually, I can account for three of those there, which makes in R1 and R2, I have four of them left over that must be there, because three of them are coming from that part of the molecule there. This boy here is NH, if you look at your data sheet, which is going to be this guy there. So I don't need to worry about that in terms of identifying R1 and R2. For this one here, this is going to be hydrogens attached to a carbon which is attached to a benzene ring. These guys here are just going to be normal carbons, so normal hydrogens attached to a, a bog standard carbon. And then for these guys here, that is going to be H, which they told you is going to be those types of hydrogen there. So, looking at those, we've removed from this spectrum now the peaks that we need to deal with. So on R1 and R2, we must have four protons which are attached to a benzene ring. Um, we have got two protons which are attached to a carbon which is attached to a benzene ring. Uh, let's have a look. We've also got... Um, these carbons here, so we've got uh, a hydrogen attached to a carbon which is there, so it looks like that's coming off there, one of those groups there, because that's your C, double bond N, then another C, and then an H, and that's a singular, and it's a three. So if you have a think about it, if I've got a peak of three, which is a singlet for that, I've obviously got three coming off of there, so that must be, say R1, because that's your nitrogen there, double bond carbon, so R1 could be CH3. 
three, which would account for that peak there. So R1 is done. I now need to work out what's going on for the rest. So what am I left over with? It looks like for R2, I'm going to have a benzene ring. I've got carbons coming off the benzene ring. That is a uh, quartet. So it's split by three neighboring hydrogens. So it looks like I've got a CH3 group there because that's of only intensity two. So I can only have two hydrogens on that carbon there, but it's split into th uh, a quartet. So it must have three neighbors, so I've got that. So it looks like that's that peak there. So that's one group there. So now I'm in four hydrogen realm here, which would make sense. So I must have four hydrogens coming up of here, which I do, and then that's going to be R2 there. So the main thing is to discount. So R1 is going to equal this CH3 group, which is that boy there. R2 is going to be benzene ring CH2, CH3, like so. Okay. So therefore, it wants me to finish that off with the structure of compound K and the structure of compound L. So let's do that. So um, let's just pull that down a little bit to give me a bit more space. So compound L is going to be all of this, because you don't change that, NO2, NO2 up there, NH, and double bond C, R1 we said was CH3, and R2 is a benzene ring with CH2, CH3 coming off, and then compound K is going to be that bit there, C, CH3, Benzene ring, CH2, CH3, and then C double bond O, like so. Um, just to make sure that we're happy about why it's in this position here, if we have a look at how many carbon environments, let's go through um, that now. Um, in this area here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven carbon environments there. So let's have a look at this boy here. All of these here are going to be different. There's no symmetry. Um, all of these carbons in the benzene ring are going to produce a different signal. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So eleven minus six gives me five carbon environments there.